Joining me now is Sky News political editor Andrew Clonell. Andrew, great to catch up with you. Labor leader Anthony Albanese today saying, no, we do not need more data on who is actually dying of the virus and why and if it, they're really dying from the virus or just with it, and is calling for Morrison to instead sack his aged care minister, Richard Colbeck. How much of a problem is all this turning out to be for the government? Well, I don't know that it is. I mean, the opposition obviously think it is. That's why they're pursuing it. I guess if you had relatives in aged care, clearly it's an issue. And there's plenty of evidence the government didn't move fast enough to get rapid antigen tests out there. But they say they've been to 99% of sites to get the residents boosted now. And uh, the fact that uh, 70 odd percent have only been boosted is because the families and the residents don't want the extra shot. So I think you have to acknowledge that when there are COVID outbreaks, people in aged care are, are, are at times closer to the end of their lives. Now, Richard Colbeck has had a series of missteps. He couldn't name last year how many people died in aged care. He's aged care minister, for goodness sake. I think his functions at a time were taken, a lot of them were taken off him and given to Greg Hunt. So there's questions about him, but I don't think it's the main focus of Australians at the moment. It does give a good attack line for parliament next week for Anthony Albanese though. And I, I think at the moment, every week that's about Scott Morrison and his government, because a lot of people are unhappy with the government and unhappy with the COVID crisis, is a good week for Labor in the lead up to the election. Morrison is trying to turn it around so that there are more weeks about what an Albanese government would mean. And he's not going to win any week, Scott Morrison, until he can do that. I think you put it very well. And I must say, I listened to Albanese's press conference today about aged care. I didn't get a single hint of what he would actually do that was different. Not, not one. A little bit of rear-view, uh, rear uh, mirror vision kind of stuff, but uh, no practical suggestions. Just uh, attack, attack. Uh, the Prime Minister on the Paul Murray show last night uh, turned the attack on Albanese for having called on China to drop some of its sanctions on our exports, but... Not on all of them. Here he is. What is he saying to the Tasmanian lobster farmers or the beef producers up in, in central Queensland, up there in, in Rockhampton, or the wine growers down there in South Australia? Which one of these is he going to trade off? Because in national security, there are only really two courses you can go down. You can appease or you can stand up for what you believe in as a country. Now... I just wonder about uh, using the national security card, Andrew. One, I don't like something as important as our relationship with China to become sort of a, you know, a chest-beating exercise before an election. I know it's got to be... A, it is a legitimate issue, but you've got to be careful about it. How do you think this uh, issue will bite? Well, not as much as it would have a year or two ago is, is my sense at the moment, but... Morrison's a good campaigner, so maybe he can make it bite, but the small target thing is killing the government. It really is. And you spoke about it just before with aged care. You're quite right. I mean, he's almost the alternative government now. He's the favourite to win. Would he send in the Defence Force? Would he buy extra rats? What would Anthony Albanese do different? And he needs to start being asked these questions. Uh, I may as well say straight out to you, mate, I, I can't say one thing... Uh, elsewhere and another thing to you uh, when I'm face to face. This week was <laughs> meant to be Scott Morrison's big reset, uh, an election less than four months away, but his speech to the National Press Club on Tuesday was blown up by journalists, including you. It was uh, an all-in brawl. There were demands by the ABC's Laura Tingle to say sorry for everything she ever reckons is done wrong. There were claims that uh, from Peter Van Onsel and some unnamed cabinet minister had called Morrison a psycho. And then there was your question, what was the price of milk and bread, which you couldn't answer. I said it was a gotcha question. I've said it was unfair. Why did you ask it? OK, well, do you even know the question? Because I didn't ask milk. I asked bread, petrol and an antigen test. Now, Andrew, I've got to be, got to be quite honest, you're quite well off. So whether petrol's $1.90 or whether it's $1.50 probably doesn't matter that much to you. But to the average middle-class Australian, it does. And Scott Morrison himself has said... Uh, petrol prices uh, will be higher under Labor. So if he can't even name the petrol price, he's got a problem, hasn't he? Look, it had come to my attention when he wasn't offering the uh, small business assistance that the state governments are offering, that he might have become, become a bit out of touch with what's going on at the moment. He's talking up high on, uh, low unemployment, 
but that just means for a lot of small businesses they can't get good people, they can't get people at all. There are an immense amount of problems, including with the cost of living. I thought the Prime Minister would be able to answer the question because it's a simple question. Everyone knows petrol's $1.90. You drive past it all the time. Everyone knows rapid antigen tests are between $10 and $20 because we suddenly have to go and get them. Bread, I would have let him off the hook, but I guess it's the standard one. I accept we can uh, differ at times, Andrew, but what I'm saying is cost of living will be an issue at this uh, election, and I believe it was a gaffe of Scott Morrison to not be able to answer. And uh, some commentators are calling this a ganging up uh, of journalists. I don't think that's fair because we all had our own questions. I no, didn't look, work with no, these no, other no let me interrupt you, know? you here. I, I I would not put you in the pack. You hunt alone. Thank you. And I, I think that, that that would be completely wrong. And you Others know that. Have. I've got Others a lot of have. respect for you. Yeah. But, but the bread question, I would just would have thought you could have asked that of any, uh, uh, you know, P uh, politician and uh, before you asked that, because they've all boned up on it now, they all know, oh, you mm. know, the price of Sunkist is this and, and the price of that is that and the price of my favourite role is this. I mean, they're all doing it now. It's stupid. But you, you only asked it of him. You could have asked it of Albo last week. He would have made a complete fool of himself as well. No, he would have got it. Because at the moment, unfortunately for Scott Morrison, Scott Morrison, Albo has to buy his own food. <laughs> Scott Morrison doesn't. But, I, you know, give, give Albo three no, years and we'll watch him. He'll probably become Albo out of touch as well. was asked about the price. <laughs> yeah, he was asked afterwards about the price of the rolls that he bought. And he did, you know, obviously he's boned up. And, oh, it's such and such and such, this price. And it was wrong. He was out by 20 yeah, it was cents. Slightly I mean, out. You know, what it was you, slightly out. He was still think, out, I, even with the uh, advance warning. I mean, I don't know. Just briefly, all I'll say is rapid antigen test price, big issue over summer, petrol prices. Scott Morrison introduced the subject in November. I don't think he has an excuse on either of those two, but that's just my view. I think you make a very good point about the petrol prices. And now that we've got this uh, point of difference between us uh, solved, uh, I think uh, probably points to you, maybe a few points to me, but some to you, we can move on and be best friends again. Mate, oh, by the way, what is the price of a kilo of mince? <laughs> a kilo? Well, I buy 500 grams, and that's usually about nine bucks. Oh, that's uh, all right. Okay, good on you, mate. You're uh, you're right in touch. See you later. I'll make a lot of tacos. See ya. Well, it is uh, nine bucks at some shops, but uh, if you go to Woolies, you can get it at six dollars fifty. I think Andrew's getting ripped off. Six dollars fifty if you buy in the kilo bags, thirteen dollars a kilo. But it just proves what what an what is the point? What is the point?